So now the goal is to make sure that the sides are perpendicular to this edge and that the mortise is flat across. Obviously it's not flat across here because I didn't finish it. These have cutting surfaces on one edge, they're smooth on the other, so if I'm cutting on this face, it won't affect this face. This is the uh, top of the tread, this is the bottom. If I have any blowout, I want it on the bottom. I don't have to worry. And I'll check to see if it's square across, and it is. I'll also check to see if it's square this way and it's slightly out. I got some debris down here that needs to be cleaned up. That's really close. I'm slightly out at the top here. And that'll work. Same thing for the other side. What appears to be more critical is that this face is perpendicular to this face so that when you drive the baluster in, this is what it registers off of for plumb in this direction. Shims can be added on this side to drive it one way or the other. And I've got just a little bit left here. So that's good, those are good, we're ready to fit the baluster to this tread. So each baluster is going to be fit to a particular tread. When we made these balusters they are all riffs on so that the grain runs diagonal. So that when you look at a baluster, the grain pattern is good on all four sides. In addition, we made the length of the detail such that it was longer on the back one to match the rake of the stair. So that when these things are installed, these will be the same on each tread, but this one's going to follow the rake of the um, stair going up. And they'll all be in line so you won't have that up and down jumping look to it. We now need to take and cut out a shoulder on each of them. Having cut that shoulder, this one was uh, determined to be a quarter inch but it has to match what you have on the tread. We'll then lay it over and place the uh, baluster with the shoulder directly on the mortise that's going to be cut to. There, each one fits that particular mortise and that one only. Once a shoulder has been cut, it's placed on the tread for marking. 
and you're going to get it so that these two distances are relatively close and then with one stroke transfer those lines and then we're going to cut off the waist side. Take a square, transfer them to the other side. And the process is the same as it was for cutting out the tail. You're going to orientate the cut so that it's perpendicular. And you can use a, a bandsaw, um, but uh, I think a handsaw may actually end up being faster for this. I have this, I'm going to sight down the blade. And now I have to be careful not to overcut because that will mar the finished surface. And I'd rather be a 30 second shy than a 30 second over. Same thing going the other direction. Cut the shoulders off. We'll take a marking knife, deepen the line. Cut a little channel. 